name is Darren Thomas. Welcome back. I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. We're in the Dex Easier, Practical Applications of Machine Learning Algorithms in R. And so what we're going to do now is, is that we're going to go over to R Studio now and we're going to begin doing the data preparation for our decision tree. So let's go ahead and move over. So I'm in R Studio. You can see right here. I'm, I'm assuming that you're already familiar with R Studio. So to make life simple, up here in the upper left corner, we have our script pane. This is where we save our code and do the various things that we're going to do in R Studio. In the bottom left, you have your console. This is where a lot of the output goes. The bottom right, of course, is where you have your primarily it, sh it shows the visualizations that you might make during your experience in R Studio. And of course, in the top right, you have various objects you may have created through your analysis. So our goal in this particular video is to just prepare our data and also to do some simple look at some visualizations just for the sake of practice. So in lines three and four, I have the packages that I'm going to need. The ISLR package, that is where we get our data from, the wage data set. ggplot2 and caret package. ggplot2 is for visualization and the caret package needs ggplot2. That's why we're installing that. R part is kind of the library for the decision trees and rattle and R part plot are for visualization purposes. So I highlight these two lines of code and I press control enter and they're loaded like that. Now next I have to load my data set called wage like so in line, in, uh, excuse me, uh, line five. In line six, I have here my C. This is so that for the purpose of being able to reduplicate whatever I'm doing right now. So I set the C to one. And now in line seven, this is where we create our train and test set. So we're using a function from the carrot package called create data partition. And basically what it's doing is as follows. It is, it is um, what it's doing is that it's kind of um, dividing our, 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 our overall data set wage into two places. Um, one that is going to be used as our training set. And if you see closely, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger for you. If you look closely here, up here in the right, you can see that this says 0.7. So what's happening here is that 70% of the data will be classified as one data set and then 30% will be the other. And so it's very common to have like a 70, 30, 80, 20 split between your training and your test data. And uh, what's happening here is that the create data partition does all this for us automatically. That's the benefit of it. So let me go ahead and zoom out here again. All right, so we're gonna press control enter and there we have it. Now I just want you to kind of see what's going on here. Entering, well, let me make the use view here. And so you can see right here that they resampled everything as shown below. Everything has a different number. You can see that right there, hopefully. And that's kind of what's happening there. Things have got renumbered. Now, what we're going to do now is that we're going to create a new, two new data sets, one called training set, the other called testing set. And so how it works is that for wage, anything that is in the in train will be in the training set. And then anything that is not in the in train, I know that sounds confusing, will not be there. And so this is how we get our, our training set split. So to make sure that this is clear for you, let me show you how many, the, the length, I guess I could just do length, huh? Length of the wage data set. Oh, that's not gonna work. So let me do structure. Oops, wage. Okay, there we go. So here we is, so we have 3,000 observations. Now let's see here, 3,000 times 0 0.7, 2,100. So when we run lines eight and nine, watch this. So if things are correctly, the, have been done correctly, the training set should be about 2,100 um, in length. Let's see here. So I use the STR structure and you can see right there, 2,101. So 70% of our data is in the training set. And so we don't have to look at the testing set because it's what, it is whatever, it's, it takes the remainder of what's left over. So we know things worked out well. So what's happened so far is that with the create data partition, we were able to divide our data set called wage into two subgroups. One for training, one called training set, the other called testing set. And so what it does is that it randomly picks 
different rows from the weight data set and assigns them a value that can be used to put them in the training set and also a value that can be used to put them in the test set. That's kind of how it works out. Now we're going to wrap up this video by just looking at some basic, uh, what do you call it, basic descriptive statistics. But let me back up and just kind of show you what's happening inside the wage data set. So we have a lot of different values here if you use the STR function. So we have year, age, marital status, their race, education, region, job class, health, health insurance, log, log, log of the wages and wages. Now we're trying to keep this simple. So what we're trying to do here, and this is slightly different from the book is, we're trying to predict or classify people by their job classification, which can be industrial or information, I believe. And we're gonna use several other variables, you know, uh, age and their wages and all these things like that to try to figure out what job classification they have that's what we're doing so we're not going to use all of these variables we could use everything but our purposes here is pedagogical in terms of teaching rather than trying to make a complex model so having said that lines 11 and 12 just give us some descriptive statistics on the characteristics of the categorical variable job class and also education so if you can see here when we use the table function you can see about half the jobs are industrial, half the jobs are information, almost half, about half and half, not exactly. And then for education, you can see we have five different groups here, less than high school, high school, some college, college graduate, and an advanced degree. That's what's happening there. And then we have also age, and this is a continuous variable. So you can see we have here a nice, looks almost normally distributed uh, histogram of age. And then lastly for wage, you can see right here, not too bad. We have some outliners over here, but for the most part, it's doing pretty good. So with this information, we're ready to begin making our model, and that will happen in the next video. So uh, for now, we're done, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.